What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for all the good and bad stuff inside the world of Apple. Now, it's another plate full of iPhone rumors or news to feast on this week. And we start off with the Wall Street Journal, who's reporting that Apple is preparing a thinner and lighter iPhone with an 8 megapixel camera sensor for a launch in the third quarter of this year. The new info might squash the debate between the next iPhone having the same form factor or not, depending on who you believe. But according to the journal, Apple has a goal to produce 25 million units by the end of the year. The new iPhone was planned for a summer launch, but it wasn't ready in time, and their sources say it still could be delayed if Han High Precision, the company that assembles the iPhone, can't improve their production rate. Now, another nugget in the article also says Apple has been experimenting with a new charging method for their revamp of the iPhone in 2012. Apple has already filed patents for wireless charging and syncing to iDevices when it makes contact with the docking stand. It's currently being used with the HP touchpad and pre phones, so it's a realistic possibility. But let's not ignore the iPad 2 when it comes to the rumor train. This is my next blog says that the iPhone isn't the only new kid on the block this fall. Oh, oh, oh. The right stuff. Uh, still rolling. Yeah, I knew that, guys. All right, a new member of the iPad family called the iPad HD will sport a double resolution screen aimed at the pro market for video and photo production. The report says it is not the iPad 3, but in addition to the current product line. Now, this is almost hard to believe. There's really no need for Apple to do this right now, but we'll see how this rumor shakes out. Now, a story is based on actual facts. A patent application by the Big A reveals a heated wireless stylus concept for the iPad and iPhone. Steve Jobs hasn't been the biggest fan in the past. We're going to use a stylus. No. <laughs> no. Who wants a stylus? You have to get them and put them away, and you lose them. Yuck. But this concept would allow the heated stylus more precise interaction to enter data or perform actions without actually touching the device or specialized paper. All right, let's take a quick break with a how-to for controlling your PC with what else? The iPad. Even though your iPad lets you do tons of great stuff when you're out and about, there are plenty of reasons why you might want to access your home computer instead. I'm Sharon Vakden for CNET.com with an easy way to control any computer with your iPad. First of all, if your mom is always asking you for tech support, it might just be easier to take control of her computer instead. To do this, I'm going to use a free program called TeamViewer. Any computer you want to control needs to have this program installed, and it's compatible with Mac and PC. Go to TeamViewer.com and download the program on your computer. When you open it, you'll see an ID and password. We'll come back to that in a second. Now go to your iPad and get the free app from the App Store. Launch it and enter the ID and password from your computer. Hit connect and watch the magic happen. You'll see a helpful screen with gesture tips. For instance, use one finger as your mouse pointer, drag with two fingers to scroll, pinch to zoom, and double tap and drag to move windows. So now you can show your mom or a friend how to change a setting or maybe even send yourself a file from your computer. But what if you want to actually stream media from your computer to your iPad remotely? Instead of taking up space on your iPad by storing movies on it, you can stream from your desktop computer with Air Video. Go to InMethod.com, then Downloads, and grab the Air Video server for Mac or PC. Open it, and you'll see a window where you can add folders you want to share with your iPad. And it's pretty neat because you can even share iTunes playlists right here. Now go to the Remote tab and check Enable Access from Internet. Also make sure Automatically Map Port is checked. Make note of the pin, and we'll be using it in a sec. Next, head over to Settings and check Require Password. Make sure you set a strong one unless you want to give hackers a free pass to your computer. Finally, make sure the server is turned on. Now head over to your iPad and download the Air Video app, which is actually compatible with all iOS devices. Hit the plus button and select Enter Server Pin. Enter that pin you noted from the Remote tab and you'll be given instant access to videos on your computer. Just remember that your remote computers will need to stay on and connected to the internet for this to work, and that if your iPad isn't connected to Wi-Fi while doing this, you're definitely hogging your data usage. All right, thanks, Ms. Sharon. Now, in some cool news for Blu-ray fans, it's still not coming as a build-to-order option on your Mac, but a company called MacGo has released the first universal Blu-ray software for the Mac and PC. Now, you'll need an external Blu-ray drive, and you can find one cheap for around 75 bucks on Amazon. 
The software is free for the first three months and $39.95 to purchase, but it's a legit solution for watching Blu-ray on your Mac. Now, the battle with iTunes for digital music continues. Spotify, the music subscription service, made it official. They're coming to the U.S. to take on iTunes. The Europe-based service offers cloud-based streaming of more than 8 million songs for free with ad support, and Spotify gave no official date except for the date of soon. And Amazon is making sure they'll be a serious player as well by offering unlimited storage for MP3 and AAC music files for people who upgrade their cloud drive service to 20 gigs of storage. It costs $20 per year. You can access your music anywhere through a Mac or PC, Android device, and it's also iPad compatible. All right, let's check out some quick bites. Jailbreaking fans, the jailbreakme.com 3.0 browser-based jailbreak is available for iOS 4.3.3 users, and it also works on the iPad too. Apple is already working on patching that hole, so you guys better get on this while you can. And Skype 5.2 for the Mac is out, and you can upgrade to a premium account. That's about 50 bucks for the group video chat feature. It also allows you to share screen and documents to multiple people. Now, unfortunately, the standalone app doesn't appear to be compatible with the recent Facebook Skype announcement, and only the Windows version supports it at the moment. And in kick-ass gadgets that we have to have, check out this aluminum keyboard case for the iPad 2 from our good friends at MIC Gadget. They're also the creators of the Steve Jobs statue. It's $50 and the slickest keyboard case we've seen so far, so you want to check it out. And finally, we leave you with the story of a 15-year-old boy named Edward Saakashvili, son of the Georgian president. But get this, he set the Guinness World Record for fastest typing on the iPad. He typed out the alphabet using the software keyboard in just 5.26 seconds and beat the previous record holder by over a second. But who really cares about that kid? I was breaking world records of my own last weekend. Mm. Once you for this week's show, make sure you send us an email at the Apple I'm Brian Tong, and we'll catch you next week. <laughs>